Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Jay Heilman, host of Kingdom Builder TV, and we're here live on day two of the Winter Jam 2024 tour. And this guy right next to me is probably very familiar to you. If you've been to the tour the last several years, uh, Mr. Russ Lee from New Salt is joining us. Russ, how are you doing today, man? Good, nice to see you. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you can join us. And you know, this is the 20th year that we've covered this tour. And I have to say this tour every year is is, is at a very exciting time for us. It's always in January. Uh, it's always either at the Sundome here or the Emily Arena. But we're back at the Sundome for the first time in 15 years. And you know, you've been with New Song since 2008 as your second go around, but yeah. a lot of people may not realize that you were with New Song back in the 90s, left for a little while and came back. Right. Um, it kind of goes to my first question, you know, how did you get started with New Song, you know, leave and then come back? How did that work for you? Well, I, I was traveling with a group called Truth, uh, and uh, when there was a Christian band that you're, you're familiar with called For Him, mm -hmm. and those were the four guys in Truth, and they were leaving, and um, uh, Roger Breland had auditioned 400 guys across the country to take their place, and he had found three guys. And he called me. I had met him. I was I met him at PTL actually. I was there singing, and they were there singing. And we met and talked. And he asked me to sing for him, and so I did. And then he would call me every once in a while. And I was a student pastor in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and then in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I was doing youth ministry and praise and worship and leading worship at church. And my wife and I were pretty newly wedded. And so I was really not interested in being on the road. I'd been on the road, and um, uh, but he called me and said, "Hey, I want you just to pray about something before him guys are leaving. I need a road pastor. I need someone to come in. And you you've been a student minister. You've been a pastor. You've you know." And so my wife and I we felt the Lord leading us. So I got on the bus with Truth in 1990. We had our first child and traveled. I traveled Truth until 1993. And I got off the road, and I'd been off the road just a couple months, and Eddie Carswell, who's the founder of Winter Jam and New Song, and the guy that wrote Arise My Love and the Christmas Shoes, mm -hmm. Eddie Carswell called me and said, hey man, uh, aren't you the guy that sang Living Life Upside Down in Truth? And I said, yeah. So they, he said, well, that, someone told me you're not with Truth anymore. And I said, no, I'm doing you know, youth ministry and evangelism and raising a family. And he said, would you pray about being a part of New Song? Would you be interested? Here's how the Lord goes ahead of you. When I was a student pastor, I also took my youth group on a choir tour. And we had done a couple of musicals that were New Song songs. I liked Eddie. I loved Eddie Carswell's songwriting because I wanted this, these kids to sing songs that had a real clear message. And the one thing about Eddie Carswell is that you don't have to try to figure out what he's saying. Mm -hmm. His message is very clear. And so their music was very was very popular, especially in the choral world, uh, translated into that world, you know. I think because of Arise, My Love, actually. But he had written a couple of youth musicals, and I had toured those musicals. So when he called me, I actually already knew a lot of their songs. And I, you know, that was the Lord going ahead of me, but I didn't know it at the time. I just wanted my kids to sing great songs, and I'd had to rehearse them for 800 hours. So I knew all of, a lot of their music. And I had actually been studying Eddie Carswell because I was trying to learn how to write Christian songs. And so when he called me, I thought it was one of my friends joking with me. And he, and, and he, he said, no, no, this is really Eddie Carswell. And, you know, why is this weird? And I said, well, you're Eddie Carswell. You're calling me. <coughs> and he said, hey, we're going to be in town in a few days. And I'd love to meet you and talk to you and love for you to sing with us a little bit. And, but, you know, let's just see what the Lord's doing. So uh, I joined New Song in 1993 and then stepped off the bus and signed a solo recording contract with Capitol in 2000 and did the I Smile record, Live What I Believe, and toured Iraq and did all kinds of amazing things, raised, had two more kids, raised my family. In 2009, Eddie Carswell, I was writing songs with Eddie uh, for the a New Song record they were doing in 2008. And Eddie called me and said, hey, um, would you ever consider getting back on the bus? He said, hey, we don't know how much longer the Lord's going to allow us to do this, but we'd love to travel with people that we love and that we love to do ministry with, and would you pray about it? And the Lord really showed me clearly that I was supposed to get back on the bus. So I did, and I joined a new song. At the February of 2009, I, got, I came to Winter Jam and joined back with the group and did some rehearsing prior to that, but 2009, February, I finished some commitments that I had uh, doing solo stuff, uh, which I've continued to do alongside, but I, you know, I, I do a lot of praise and worship, a lot of conferences, a lot of speaking and other things. 
Um, but I finished those commitments and got on the new Sunbus in 2009, and it's been amazing ever since. We've just been excited to see how God has allowed us to kind of walk through uh, and see Him do incredible things with uh, watch Winter Jam grow to what it's become. And, Watch what God has done with us because, you know, we never would have picked it. I don't think anyone else would have either. I don't think anyone would have thought that God could use a bunch of boys from Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama to do anything spectacular, but he did. We're great. Well, you know, Russ, one of the songs that I love that you did was back in 2000. It's, it's hard to believe when I think about this. I was, I was, I smiled when I thought about it, too. Clever. And, you know, I listened to it. I actually played it for my wife the other day, but the song Smile. From 2000, I, yeah. I, when I was listening to the day, not only, not only is that still one of my favorite songs that that you've done, solo wise, oh, thank but you. it's still one of my favorite songs. It's the last 20 years. Well, it's a very you. catchy song, got a very like upbeat, positive message, and you know, going in the last two decades uh, plus, like in, when you've been in music and stuff, you've been a part of groups, you've been solo, been a part of groups again. What do you what do you find the biggest challenges are, or maybe easier things? Uh, with being with a group compared to going out solo? Well, it, you know, it's great. So, you know, um, Billy Goodwin, who is the other lead singer in New Song. The one that sings even higher. Up yeah, Billy Goodwin <laughs> is one of the greatest voices in any kind yes. of music. And when you're a solo artist, everything is on you. So you're out there for an hour and a half or two hours, and you're carrying the entire night. And I don't mind that, I love that. <clears throat> but it's great, you know, we were built for community. You know, we're, we're built for community and and so to be able to have a group of guys that you're constantly going to spiritual war with and that you're you know on this journey this adventure doing that together and working these things out it's it's a challenge a lot of bands don't make it yeah. but there's also so many great victories that you share with someone you know uh, and, and that's that's been a, one of the greatest challenges but also one of the greatest rewards is for us to stay focused and to keep moving you know, when, and when there's a group dynamic, you pick your battles and you, you know, things that are, are inconsequential or won't matter 10 years from now or a year from now, you don't have to die on that hill. You can just, you know, and, and learning that it's not about you and learning that, you know, when we started Winter Jam, we were the headliner. Yeah. And then we're not the headliner anymore and we're okay with that because we're thrilled that God let us be a part of this and that he's given us the vision for a vehicle that can reach so many people. And just to be able to be a part of that and for him to facilitate it. We do the groundwork, but God is really the facilitator. Yeah. We could not have filled up the arena in Mobile last night. Only God can do that. And the, and the, the funny thing was, we were talking pre-interview that next year will actually be Winter Jam's 30th year. Yes. I mean, you guys have been doing this, and you've been on that road for more than half of that time. A lot of it. Um, what, yeah. what does this tour mean to you? I mean, be, being in, in the very beginning there, when Winter Jam first started, then you know, kind of taking a break and then coming back, what is the Winter Jam tour meant to you, you know, personally? Sure, yeah. Well, it's exciting to see. So I was there in the early years when we were starting it, and we had built it up to a certain degree. And you know, we were having seven, eight thousand people come a night to a few nights in January when it was January Jam. You know, it was yeah. us, Clay Cross, uh, Jackie Velasquez, uh, Bob uh, 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 Butterfly Kisses, Bob Carlisle. Carlisle, yeah. It's a brain. <laughs> uh, but anyway, some of those great artists, Russ Taff, some of those guys were out with us in those days, you know, and to be able to travel with them, these are people that really influenced me musically. So be, to be able to travel with them and do those concerts and to see, wow, what God has done, how he's moved you. You just bring a little bit of faithfulness and, and passion to do ministry to his feet and lay it there as an offering. And he'll use it. He's a, he really is good at putting you where he wants you to be and giving you opportunities if you'll be faithful, you know, and if you'll answer that calling. So... To see what it had come from, uh, from and I had taken my kids a few times to see, you know, some when our friends were on tour, Toby and the Mercy Me guys, and New Song, of course, and Anointed, and some of those great groups. We go see them when they were in town, uh, and 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 I, but I was so sure that God had me where He wanted me, and I had so many great opportunities to do things. Went to Iraq twice, and literally took my family and gave away concerts in third world countries for eighteen months. On our twenty, my wife, my and my wife's twenty fifth year of being saved, we just spent that year doing missions work with our kids. So we had some great opportunities to do things. But when I came back to a new song, it it was it was a bigger Winter Jam was bigger, and um, and but it was just like stepping back into my lane. It was kind of like uh, okay, here's your bike. We you haven't been riding it, but we're still doing the same thing, and you're you're still the guy we want to do it with. And so get back on the bike and let's go. So it was kind of 
I just rejoined the journey. We were, so we were traveling together. Then I got out a new song and we did some things that were great and God honored them and I was blessed to be a part of it. And then he brought our roads back together. We remerged and, uh, and you know, we've been able to do that since 2009, late 2008. So it's been extraordinary and, and, and it's been exciting to see that. And there's a, one of the great gifts of being older and doing anything for a while is you begin to get clarity yeah. about what's important. And you realize that God's building a kingdom and what he's doing is way more important than what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so you, you're you okay with that and you're glad that he lets you be a part of it. You realize you're a foot soldier in the army of God and you go, okay, Lord, what's my next assignment? I want to do that. And Lord, so Lord, give me the strength to do that faithfully. And so that's really where we aren't there just now, but Billy and I talk about this all the time. And Billy says, you know, can you believe we get to do this? Every night, almost, we go out on Winter Jam and we pray and they're about to announce our names. And Billy looks at me and goes, can you believe we get to do this? It's pretty awesome we get to do this together, isn't it? And I say, yeah, it is amazing. You know, and Billy and I, Billy will say to me sometimes, you know what we're going to do when this is over and God doesn't want us to do this anymore? I said, I say, no, whatever he wants us to. That's, that's right. what we're going to do. Whatever the next thing is, we'll do that and try to be faithful. And so that's kind of our goal. We, we, we don't hold any of this like this. We hold all of it. We've learned. We used to hold it like this. But uh, that's a dangerous. You can you can you can smother something. You can you can choke something doing this. But when we hold things before the Lord like this, uh, then whatever happens with that thing, you realize it's in God's hands and not yours, and right. He's controlling it. You're not, and that's a, that's a great encouragement, and it's a great relief on those nights when it's not going well. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's what that's why we that's why my podcast and the stuff we do is called Kingdom Builder because it's something that that we're trying to do. We're trying to build the kingdom, but basically. You know, we want God to do with us whatever He wants in order to do that. Right. Like we're we're just along for the journey, just like you are. Sure. And you know, you you've been on the store for a long time, and I I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this this question. But what's your favorite song to sing live on the Winter Jam tour? I don't know. It's pretty awesome to. So right now we're doing a song. Uh, you know, the, my staple answer is "Arise, My Love" because yeah. it's been such a career song for us. And it's pretty exciting to, you know, be in Tampa, Florida and see a 16-year-old kid in camo with his hands in the air singing Arise My Love with you. That's pretty doggone awesome. But uh, last year, my three-year-old, at the time, two-year-old grandson began to battle cancer. And he's just finished with all that. And by the grace of God, he's cancer-free and he's no more treatments. He's doing great. But I didn't, we didn't know how that was going to end. And... Uh, we had just written a song, Eddie Carswell and I and a couple other guys had just written a song called Love is Stronger that we'll do tonight. And it was really about, it was really a song we, we, we wanted to encourage people to realize that God loves you and regardless of what you're facing, His love is stronger than that. And because God loves you, you can make it. You can do it, right? So that was the message of the song and we were writing the song and recording it when we found out that Cade had cancer. And so God was like, no, this song's for you. It's not just for you to sing to other people. No, 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 this... This message is for you, too. So, you know, and we knew it was special when we were writing it. We kind of knew, you know, that it was special because everybody finds themselves at one point or another. If you live long enough, the Bible says, in this world, you will have trouble. And if you live long enough, you're going to have one of those days that's beyond a bad day. And so, uh, you know, uh, hopefully our, our heart is that this song will encourage people every night to keep trusting the Lord and know that he's the God of the outcome. And regardless of what happens, he's faithful and you're in his hands and you can trust him. That's really the message of the song. And it became very personal in the last year. And so right now that's really become my moment in the night. Uh, you know, my, my, uh, my, my uh, as, the, as our guys call it, my sneak a preach moment, you know, where we can really just talk to people and go. Um, but but winter, winter Jam wouldn't be Winter Jam without a rise, my love. Yeah. That's the one thing that's happened every single night of Winter Jam from the very beginning. When it was New Song, then it was New Song and Friends, and then it was January Jam, mm -hmm. and then it became Winter Jam almost 30 years ago. The one thing that's been consistent other than the message of the gospel, we take an offering to pay the bills, I rise my love. Yeah. That's been there every night. And Lord willing, we'll be there tonight. And I can tell you in closing that I rise my love is one of the few songs that I've heard live in concert that literally gives me chills because of the harmony. Because uh, you got all the whole group up there, front stage singing in harmony of that song. And when you guys get to that oh, end, 
when you get to the end of the song thank you and go up even a notch higher it's like i get chills every time i hear that and there's only a few songs that i can think of in thank christian you. and mainstream music that's harmonies do that to me and that's, that's one of those songs and i look forward to hearing that every single year and we're excited that we're excited about the show in tampa tonight it's day two of the tour and Russ, we're looking forward to seeing you and the rest of the bands up there tonight. Well, thank man. you. It's a good night. Yeah. I was there last night. I've seen one more winter jam than you have. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and it was fantastic. Now it was just so good. I enjoyed the evening so much. You never know when you put this tour together how all the pieces are going to gel. You know, when you when you grab the recipe that you're handed, and you go, okay, how's this all going to come together and flow tonight? Awesome. It, 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 every year it is. We're always amazed. Yeah. And so it's just, it's a wonderful night of worship and it's God honoring and I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, you gotta be doing something right if it's if we're almost 30 years in and you guys are still doing this. So thank you so much for joining us today and thank you, good luck Appreciate tonight. You. And thank you. Know, you. We pray that this tour it does amazing things uh, for the kingdom thank for the next so three much. months. Thank you. Hey, if your folks wanna come out and they're watching from another city, go to jamtour.com to find out when we're going to be near you. It's $15 at the door. Yeah, no tickets required. No tickets required. And so come out. Come yeah. out and join us. You'll enjoy it. You definitely will.